Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back. So today I wanted to give you guys a look into ExpressVPN just so that you guys can learn how to use a VPN in the first place. So if you're new to VPNs and you're also not really sure which VPN to go for, uh, today I have a tutorial for you as well as a good recommendation that you could use uh, if you end up liking this VPN. Now, let's start with basically how to use a VPN. If you're looking for more in-depth information about the VPN or Express specifically, you'll find a full review down below. And if you want to check out any pricing, you'll also find those below alongside some discounts, just as an FYI. Now, as far as using the VPN, the reason why I like using Express VPN is because it's super easy to use. It's as simple as turning on this uh, button and just turning it off when you want the VPN to turn off. Very simple. Now, as you can tell, you have a very simple interface here with the recently used locations. So what you want to do here is go to the VPN locations and kind of just pick whatever it is that you're looking for. You have over 3000 servers in 100 in five countries. So plenty of countries, plenty of servers all over the place and servers in countries that you wouldn't really be getting with other VPNs, like a bunch in the Middle East and Asia. So it's a pretty huge selection and having a good selection of servers can be very useful, especially when you're, let's say, trying to access streaming services. So this will basically make a big difference when you're, let's say, going to your uh, prime video library and you notice that you don't have the office. But for me, I can actually reverse that. And if I just give it a refresh here, I'll be able to have access to the office. So how does that work? Again, a VPN is going to route your connection through a selected server so that it makes it look like you're somewhere else, like the United States or any other country for that matter. So let's say I'm going to connect to, let's just go with Italy. So I can either click on Italy and connect it here or just double click on Italy and it'll connect me to the VPN. And then I can go to what is my IP address again, give it a refresh and it'll look like as if I'm in Italy because I'm connected to the Express VPN Italian server. And now I'll also have access to the Italian Prime library which also has the office because the American library does not have the office on Amazon Prime Video. So this is just one example of using the VPN for accessing a streaming service. And it works the same way for any other streaming service or any other service that may not be available to you in the first place. Like it could be a online casino, it could be some sort of crypto service or just a software that's not available to you. You can just connect to the country where it's available and you'll have access to it as if you're living there because the internet will treat you as if you're actually there. And that's how you get access to the content that's not local to you. It's by connecting to a server that is physically there. And this is basically what a VPN is. Now, not only is a VPN good for that, it's also good for privacy. So originally VPNs were created so that uh, companies can exchange information safely over the internet. And so they use these tunnels which encrypt their traffic so that nobody else is able to pry on that information, that valuable data. And so naturally, the commercial versions of VPNs, not only do they give you a huge selection of countries so that you can get access to all kinds of local and foreign content, but you can also encrypt your traffic so that nobody can take a look at your data, uh, whether it's your ISP or government or any other outside party. Of course, you need a reliable VPN because you may ask, well, you know, if nobody's able to look at my data, then I'm sure the VPN can, and you're right. So you need a VPN with a a good no locks policy. And most VPNs will claim a no locks policy, which is why I don't really take it that seriously. But with ExpressVPN, not only do we have independent audit reports, but we also have a real life example when the Russian ambassador was assassinated in 2017, the Turkish authorities seized an ExpressVPN server as part of their investigations, but ExpressVPN did not and has never possessed any customer connection logs that would enable them to know which customer was using the specific IPs cited by the investigators. So this is a real life example of ExpressVPN being as reliable as it can be and as private as it can be despite the unfortunate situation here. But this is 
just a great example of how seriously ExpressVPN take their users' privacy. But this is just a great example of ExpressVPN upholding the integrity of their users' privacy. Now, in order to make full use of Express, you need to understand how to use it properly. So in this case, what I want to do is explain to you the two main security features, the kill switch and split tunneling. Now, the kill switch is going to disconnect you from the internet when your VPN disconnects unexpectedly. So why is this useful? Let's say you're in a country where you're not really supposed to uh, maybe open up a specific website that's banned in your country. Maybe a game is not available to you. Maybe you know, you're torrenting and you're trying to protect your identity, whatever it is that you're doing. Or maybe you're in a restrictive country with a lot of censorship. So in this case, you don't necessarily want your data to ever be exposed to the ISP or your government. So in this case, when you turn on the kill switch and then turn on the VPN, anytime the VPN, for whatever reason, loses connection unexpectedly, it will also disconnect you from the internet so that none of your information gets leaked out to your government or ISP or any other outside party. So this is why the kill switch is very useful. So you want to keep that on if you're interested in making that happen. So that's for the kill switch. Now, split tunneling, when you turn it on, you want to adjust it first. So as you can tell, there's only allow selected apps to use the VPN or do not allow selected apps to use the VPN. So the first option here, when you select it and you select the applications, this means that it's only going to allow these applications to use the VPN while the rest of your applications are not using the VPN. If you pick this option instead, it means the selected application will not use the VPN while the rest of your connection can use the VPN. This is what split tunneling is. You can select what is tunneled through the VPN. So this is a very useful feature that is unfortunately not available on Apple devices, whether you're on Mac, iPad or the iPhone this is only available on Android and Windows and I believe Linux and it's only due to the complexity of the Apple devices as far as hardware and software. So it's not ExpressVPN's fault, it's just Apple's uh, design. Now that's all you need really to understand how to use the VPN properly. Besides that, you want to make sure you're using the lightweight UDP protocol. This is the best protocol. Usually any, you know, WireGuard type of protocol will be the best. You can also keep it on automatic, but Lightway is sort of like ExpressVPN's version of the WireGuard protocol, which is just the fastest protocol. That's all you need to know about the WireGuard protocol. It's an advanced type of protocol that makes everything much easier, faster, more reliable, and more secure. You can read about the protocol if you're interested, but that's really all you need to know to operate a VPN. And you also have other useful features that can be very useful with ExpressVPN, like the advanced protection here, which will block trackers, malicious sites, ads, and you can also block adult sites if you wanna use it as a form of parental control if you have kids, so that's pretty useful. Uh, and that's basically all you need to know about ExpressVPN for the most part, but if you'd like to learn a little bit more, you can check out the review down below. So now that you know all about ExpressVPN, you can go ahead and confidently just pick whatever it is that you're looking for. So let's say I wanna watch some show that is available only in, I don't know, Sweden. I'll go ahead and connect to the Swedish server. And just to double check, I'll go to my IP address. What is my IP address.com and check that I'm indeed in Stockholm. Well, virtually speaking, at least. And that's basically it. So if you guys are interested, by the way, in Express, again, you'll find the full review below if you want to learn more. And you'll find these special deals and discounts linked in the description if you end up picking it up. Um, out of curiosity, I did ask Express, and it seems like most people end up spending way more money on the monthly plan, thinking they're just not going to need the VPN for more than a month. Uh, so they just keep renewing monthly. But if you actually opt for the yearly plan, you'll notice that the rate goes down by almost half. So yeah, if you know you need the VPN for just a month, then by all means, go ahead and get the month plan. And even then, you can still get your refund if you're not satisfied for whatever reason. Uh, but if you know you're going to need the VPN for more than just a month, then you definitely want to go for something like the one-year plan. And with the link below, you'll be getting 15 months instead of just 
12. So that is basically it for this video. Hopefully you guys learned a thing or two about VPNs and how to use them efficiently and what they're used for. Besides that, please comment below if you have any questions. I'll be happy to answer all of them. Like and subscribe if you'd like to support the channel and stay up to date with everything VPNs and cybersecurity. Stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next video.